In this video, I'll introduce the concept of the Fourier transform as a generalization of Fourier series to non-periodic functions. So to recall, a periodic function of period 2L can generally be expressed as a Fourier series, uh, shown over here, where the coefficients are determined by evaluating the following integrals replacing f of x with the function you're trying to represent. And again, just to briefly recall, a periodic function is one that is repeated. Uh, any integer multiple of, the, uh, of its period. So over here, n is an integer. So before transitioning to Fourier transforms, we're going to express our Fourier series in slightly different terms by using Euler's identity. Which says that the complex exponential can be written as the sum of these two trigonometric functions with an extra i where i is equal to the square root of minus one. So using this, we can re-express our Fourier series more compactly. by now letting the integers or our indices go from minus infinity to infinity. We now have a single coefficient, c of n, and a complex exponential replacing the cosine and sine that we had above. And the coefficient is now given by the following formula. Okay, notice the difference here. Our complex exponential in the sum has a, a positive argument and in the formula for the coefficient it now has a negative exponent. And what we'd like to do now is starting from this form of the Fourier series, we're going to generalize the idea of expressing a function as a sum of uh, complex exponentials to non-periodic functions. Okay, so we'd like to expand this to uh, non-periodic functions. And in preparation for that, I'm going to introduce some notation. We're going to call k of n and pi over l and delta k is going to be the difference of two consecutive k's. So k of n and k of n minus one, which just gives pi over L. So continuing with this new notation, we're going to substitute our expression for the coefficient cn into our sum. Cn was given 
by this integral. There should be a dx over here. We're integrating with respect to x. All right, and now we're going to start introducing our new variables. So we keep our sum. We're going to replace one over two L by delta K over two pi. Uh, sorry, it should be minus L to L. I'm going to replace n pi over L by Kn. And similarly out here, replace n pi over L by Kn. And the idea then is to think of a non-periodic function as a, the limit of a periodic function with an infinite limit. Okay, and what this means is L goes to infinity. And because delta K is, was pi over L, that means that delta K goes to zero. So this allows us to write f of x and the limit delta k going to zero. Go to one over two pi. Oops, minus L to L. Or I guess now because I was going to infinity, this really is minus infinity to infinity x i k x dx and now we have our delta k out here Now we're going to replace this integral. Just introducing some more notation. As f of kn with a little tilt. And the reason this is a function of kn is because we're integrating with respect to x. So we've integrated out any dependence on x. Then with this new notation, we can rewrite f of x as the limit delta k goes to zero. Our sum, our new function f tilde of kn.
Okay, so we've transformed this expression into this one over here by introducing this new notation. And in the limit where delta k goes to zero, you're again summing over infinitely many things. So in this limit, our sum turns into an integral and our discrete quantity kn becomes a continuous quantity. Essentially, n uh, becomes so large that we can treat k of n as essentially a continuous quantity. And we're going to call that variable k so that we're left with f of x is equal to minus infinity to infinity f of tilde kx dk. So we're integrating with respect to our variable k now. And f tilde of k is 1 over 2 pi f of x minus i kx dx. Okay, these two quantities are referred to as Fourier transform pairs. So f tilde of k is the Fourier transform of f of k and f of x is the inverse Fourier transform of f tilde of k. So we've generalized the concept of Fourier series to consider continuous functions represented as a essentially infinite sum over a discrete quantity k, which is usually called a spatial frequency. And in the next video, we'll go through uh, an example of how to use these forward transform pairs to extract some information about uh, a given function. I'd also like to note that there are different conventions that exist for Fourier transforms. Sometimes this two pi is split between these two. So you would have, you would have a one over square root of two pi here and one over square root of two pi over here. Sometimes the one over two pi is in this one and not in this one. It's just different conventions that you would need to learn to adapt to.